Hey guys, so I am back with another video. I know it has been quite a while since I posted, but I've filmed this video once already and I was uploading it and everything to my computer and I realized that I was out of focus the whole time. And most of it's just me talking, so I mean it would have been good, but I want it to be better because you know I'm a perfectionist, so here I am filming this again. So what this video is going to be about, it's going to be everything about foundation. I've always had trouble in the past picking out the right foundation for me and I know how hard it can be and it can really be a big struggle. So I just want to kind of make it easier for you guys and help you pick out the right foundation for, for you. The right foundation for your skin type, skin color, skin tone, everything. I will show you tools that you can use. Just basically everything and there is going to be a lot of information. At the end of the video I'm going to show you how I apply my foundation. And on one side of my face, I'm going to use my Beauty Blender, and on the other, I'm going to be using a brush. That I will talk about those when we get more into the video. So, I'm not just going to sit here and blabber. We're going to get, we're just going to jump right into it. Also, if you see me looking at my phone a little bit, um, I've made an outline because I really don't want to skip anything or miss anything. So, I just kind of made myself an outline so I don't skip anything, so... First of all, before you can pick a right foundation for you, you have to know your skin type. If you know your skin type, it will be so much easier to narrow down a good foundation for you. The first skin type we're going to talk about is normal skin. If you have normal skin, you have a good balance of oil. Um, you're not too oily and you don't really get dry spots. You also don't break out often. Your skin is just all around pretty good. The second skin type we're going to talk about is dry skin. This is where you have like no oil in your skin, so you tend to have dry patches a lot and say you get out of the shower after you've just washed your face and you don't put moisturizer on right away, your skin feels really tight. That's how you know you have dry skin. Also when you have dry skin, your face is really dull and you kind of look like you're not, not really alive there. The third skin type we're going to talk about is oily skin. This is where you have an excess amount of oil and you're just oily all over. You feel like you kind of want to wash your face multiple multiple times a day because it's just like oily and gross. If you wear makeup and you have oily skin, you kind of have to like blot your makeup or else it looks really shiny. Just obviously an excess amount of oil. The fourth skin type is combination skin. If you have combination skin, you have a combination of oil and dryness. Um, usually you get oily in your T-zone and dry patches on the outer perimeter of your face. The fifth skin type is sensitive skin. If you have sensitive skin, you kind of get blotchy easily and you may have reactions to different products you use where it may sting your face or, um, you know, just really sensitive, gets red easily. I think I have a mixture of sensitive skin and dry skin because I really do have a lot of redness in my face. But I also am really dry, like if I don't moisturize my face and if I were to put foundation on, it would look horrible. I would look like I was 50 years old. Hopefully you've picked out your skin type and kind of know what skin type you've got going on. Before we get into foundations, we're going to get into primers. A primer is something that your foundation can stick to. You put it on after your moisturizer and before your foundation. I personally don't use a primer because I feel like I don't need one. I just moisturize my skin and then put my foundation on that. Don't put your foundation on if you don't have anything else on your face. If you just wash your face and put your foundation on, there's a good chance it's not going to look good and it won't last. I always wash my face, moisturize my face, and then put my foundation on. Your foundation needs something to stick to or else it's not going to look right. Um, you don't necessarily need a primer, but you will need a moisturizer or something for your foundation to stick on to so it's not just going on to dry skin. A primer does, there are a few different types of primers. Some primers say that they can help make your pores less visible. I don't know if I believe that. I don't really want a primer to be filling in my pores because I do break out sometimes. And I usually have more hormonal breakouts though, but I don't know. It just doesn't sound very healthy for something to be filling in your pores. That's just me. If it works for you, great. It's kind of, you just kind of have to try it out. Another primer, which could be really good, but I wouldn't know because I don't have oily skin, is they have these primers for oily skin to kind of control the oil and it can kind of also mattify it because a lot of people with oily skin don't want their foundation to be looking like really shiny and oily. They usually go for more of a matte finish because they're oily. 
So they do make primers for oily skin which help control the oil and keep your face matte. And they also make a few primers out there for dry skin. I've never tried them out because again I just use a moisturizer. But it could be if you have really really dry skin you may want to try out. I know Smashbox has one. I've never tried it out though but it kind of just gives you some extra moisture and helps your foundation go on even smoother. So that's it for primers. Now we're going to move on to the different formulations of foundation that you can get. There are three different kinds of formulations of foundation that you can get. The first type of foundation formulation we're going to talk about is liquid foundation. This is what I use. I never used to use it, but I've really grown into it. I think it's best for normal to dry skin. They do have some out there for for more oily skin and they do work great. What a liquid foundation is, is it's mainly water based and there are different coverages. There are different coverages for every foundation but we'll get more into that next. A liquid foundation is just mainly water based. It's really good for your skin. If you pick the right one for your skin type it can really help out your skin. And it will just make your foundation and your face look flawless even if you have, you know, impurities. The second foundation formulation we're going to talk about is cream foundation. A cream foundation is usually oil based and it usually has a heavier coverage. I would not recommend this for oily skin at all. It will probably just make your make your face feel even more oily and make it feel kind of gross. But honestly, you kind of just have to try foundations and see what works for you because that's what I've had to do and hopefully this video will help you choose a little better. But honestly, everybody has different skin. You just kind of have to keep just try out different products see if the hit or miss for you. The third foundation formulation is a powder foundation. A powder foundation is best suitable for oily skin because it will mattify you and it will just help control the oil more. For dry skin I wouldn't really recommend a powder foundation. It will kind of just stick to your dry spots and enhance them more and that's not what you want to do. You want to make your face look as beautiful as possible and Powder foundation and dry skin just they don't mix. Now that we've covered the formulations of the foundation, we are going to get into the coverages of foundation. And there are four coverages. The first one is sheer. Sheer foundations are the lightest foundation you can get. It's barely there. It will not cover any flaws if you have them. If you have really great skin, I recommend a sheer foundation just to kind of even out your skin tone. It works great if you have really nice skin. You just kind of want to even it out and enhance it more. A drugstore example of a sheer foundation is CoverGirl's Clean Foundation. They also have the normal one and the sensitive skin one. All those are um, sheer, I think they're sheer foundations. A more high-end sheer foundation would be NARS Sheer Glow. Now the next coverage of a foundation is a light coverage. This is just a little bit um, heavier than a sheer coverage. It's still very light. It will even out your skin tone more than the sheer coverage will, but you still, it will not cover your discolorations, it won't cover pimples. But again, if you have great skin and you just have like a few pimples here and there, I would go for like the lightest, the lightest foundation that you can. Because if you just have a few impurities, you don't want to cake foundation all over your face if you just have a few, because that's, what's, that's what concealer is for. So I suggest going for a sheer foundation and then just spot treating, um, spot covering up your impurities with concealer. But we'll get more into that um, in the next video on concealer. An example of a drugstore foundation that has a light coverage would be L'Oreal's True Match Lumi Foundation. A high-end example of a light coverage foundation is Clinique's Super Balanced Makeup. Now the third coverage is medium coverage. This is what I use. I have found that because I do have more redness in my skin, a light foundation, it could be great over the summer because I don't like to wear that much makeup over the summer, but I like to go with a medium because I do have so much redness in my face, I don't really want that to peek through my foundation. Um, this is what I use. It's very light. You, There are some foundations out there that are medium coverage that feel really heavy, but the ones that I use... I don't even like I don't even feel like I have makeup on my face right now. It's it's great and my I think my skin looks great. I do have impurities. I do have um some acne scarring over here and I do have a few little friends down here, but medium coverage works great for me and I suggest it if you have skin like mine. Also, it does cover up very well. 
obviously not as well as full coverage which we're going to get into in a minute but it works great for me if you do have good skin and you do have some flaws like I do I suggest a medium coverage it's great a drugstore example of a medium coverage foundation is Revlon's whipped foundation a high-end medium coverage foundation is makeup forever's HD foundation okay now the last coverage of foundation is full coverage this is the heaviest this is going to cover everything it you basically if you have if you have skin like mine which I do have obviously like I just said, I do have some scars and pimples and everything. If I were to put a full coverage foundation on my face, I I don't need it. I suggest full coverage foundations for people who have are struggling really bad with like acne. If you do struggle with acne and have it all over your face, I would go for a full coverage foundation if that makes you feel comfortable. I definitely you don't need to cover everything. Um, it's better to let your skin breathe to kind of let it heal. But if you feel more confident with it covered up, I would go for a full coverage foundation because it's very opaque and it's going to cover everything. But when the higher coverage you get, the more you'll be able to feel it on your face because it's heavier, it's going to cover more, you're going to feel it there. Rimmel Lasting Finish Foundation is an example of a drugstore full coverage foundation. And a high-end full coverage foundation is Kat Von D's Lock It Foundation. Now that we've covered the coverages, we are going to talk about the kind of finishes that they can give you next. There are four different ones that we're going to talk about today. The first one is a satin finish. A satin finish is a finish that it's not shiny, but it's best described as like a sheen where you just kind of have like a nice glow to your skin. It's not matte, it's just very kind of natural, like a little glowiness to your skin. A drugstore example of a satin finish is Maybelline's Dream Mousse Foundation. A high end of a satin finish is MAC is Max Mineralized Moisture Foundation. The second one we're going to talk about is a matte foundation. A matte foundation is best suited for oily skin. It Basically there's just no shine whatsoever. You just, it's totally matte. Um, you don't have like a glowiness like I kind of have a glowiness. Um, there's just no shine, no nothing like that. It's just very Matte. A drugstore example is Rimmel's Stay Matte Foundation. A high-end example is Makeup Forever's Matte Velvet Foundation. Now the third finish is a luminous finish. A luminous finish is kind of a dewy, like wet look. I love this because I have dry skin. If you have dry skin, it will just make your skin feel like alive. It will make you look alive because when you have dry skin, your skin tend to look, tends to look very dull. And you don't want to have a matte finish if you have dry skin because it will make it look even more dull. So I suggest like a luminous or a satin finish for dry skin because it gives you a healthy glow and it makes you just like look alive. A drugstore example is L'Oreal's Lumi Foundation. And again, a high end is NARS Sheer Glow. Okay, and the last one we're going to talk about is a natural finish. This is what a lot of people go for because obviously they don't want people to tell that they have makeup on. A natural finish makes your face look it's in it makes your face look like it's in its natural state. A drugstore example of this is Rimmel's Clean Finish Foundation. And a high end is Bobbi Brown's Long Lasting Natural Finish Foundation. Okay, now one of the hardest parts to picking out foundation is matching the right color to you. Trust me, I have had so much trouble doing this in the past. But doing these few, tr few tricks will really help you hopefully pick out your foundation. First of all, you want to know the undertone that your skin has. You either have a warm, cool, or neutral undertone. A trick that I like to do is look at the inside of your wrist. Um, look at your veins right here. I have kind of bluish veins, so that means I have more of a cool undertone. Which means my foundations are going to have more pinky in it. I tend to go for a more neutral one because I don't... My face is red and I don't like to add more pink to it, so that's just me though. If you have like noticeably pink skin like everywhere, like see I don't really feel like too pink here. Like my chest and my arms, they feel more neutral to me, so I go with more of a neutral foundation. Now if you have green veins, that means you have a warm undertone. What a warm undertone is... You're going to look for more yellow undertones in your foundation. Now, if you look at your wrist and you can't really tell, um, you can't really see your veins too much, that means you have a neutral undertone, which means you're going to have, you're going to pick a foundation that has a good amount of 
pink and yellow undertones mixed into it. Usually foundations are labeled as to what undertones they are. For example, L'Oreal True Match has a is a great line for color matching. They have like C1 through C10. That C stands for cool and the 1 through 10 stands for the depth of color that you are. Meaning 1 would be the lightest and 10 would be the darkest. So say you are very pale and you have a cool undertone. You would probably go for a C1. C1 or C2 depending on how pale you are. Now if you are darker and you have a cool undertone you would go you would gravitate more towards C10, maybe C9, depending on how dark you are. Same goes for W1 through 10. I don't know if that's the correct numbers, but W standing for warm, and 1 through 10, again, depth of color. 1 being the lightest, 10 being the darkest. And N is for neutral, 1 through 10, lightest, darkest. Now, don't get confused if you go into MAC because it's the total opposite, meaning NW is more for cool undertones. Um, I kind of remember it as not warm. So if you walk into MAC and you have a cool undertone, you're, wa you're going to want to go for the NWs. If you're warm walking into MAC, you're going to want to go for NC. So that is just totally confusing. I'm not sure why they did that, but that's just how it is. So don't get confused if you go into MAC or just other brands. But the same thing with MAC is, are the numbers. Again, like 15 being the lightest shade and 55 being like the darkest. Okay, now there are different ways to apply your foundation. The first one is easily your hands. They're free. I used to apply my foundation with my hands all the time, but I've now gravitated for more brushes and um, my beauty blender because I like trying out different things to see what it's going to look like on my skin. When you use your hands, it gives you kind of a more natural, lighter coverage than if you were to use a brush or sponge. But please, if you're going to use your hands when you apply your foundation, make sure you wash them first because if you're not washing your hands and you just did your hair and put hairspray in your hair and then you're touching it and then touching your face, that is the easiest way to spread bacteria and it you can just clog your pores and everything. So please, before you apply your foundation with your hands or even if before you apply your moisturizer with your hands, make sure you wash your hands first. I always never touch my face unless I washed my hands, like right away. Now with your hands, you can either, I'm not gonna touch my face because I haven't washed them, but you can either like do rub circular motions to make sure you get everywhere. Um, say you have like some acne scarring right here and you want a little more coverage over there, you can kind of pat it on and then blend it out around. That's just the easiest way is that you can use your hands. Now another way you can apply your foundation is this classic little sponge. Using this sponge will give you a light and even coverage you can either swipe it, um, swipe your foundation like this to kind of blend it out. And again, if you want like a heavier coverage in some area, you can just pat um, to give that more of a coverage and then just blend everywhere else. Now another way you can apply your foundation is with this classic foundation brush. This is my least favorite way of applying foundation on anybody because it just, I don't know, I just don't like it that much. It tends to leave streaks, no matter who I use it on, what foundation I'm using, it just leaves these streaks and you can tell that you have foundation on it because it's just streaking your foundation. But you know, if you find a way that it works for you, great. Um, but again, it just, it kind of leaves streaks and I don't really like that way of applying foundation. Now, a brush that I will use to apply foundation is this Sigma brush. This is a flat top kabuki, any flat top kabuki um, will work. And this is a flat top kabuki and it's just really, it's really great and it's really dense. Um, it really applies your foundation great. Now, a few ways you can do this, I will show you more in the video. With this brush, you can use it a few different ways. It will give you, it will give you a great coverage. I tend to notice that I get more of a full coverage when I use a brush rather than using my hands or a beauty blender. So like if I'm having, if I have really bad breakouts, then I will tend to use this brush. But... If you have dry skin, it may not work great for you because what a brush like this does is when you're buffing it in, you're exfoliating, which can, isn't too good for dry skin because then your foundation can tend to like stick to the dry patches that like are exfoliating. So just be aware of that. Again, you just have to try it and see if it works for your skin. Now, they do also make a rounded flat top kabuki. This is just very straight. The, the other one is rounded. 
that's more for buffing it into your skin, um, just really buffing in circular motions. That's also great. The way that I have been loving applying my foundation is using my Beauty Blender. It starts out a lot smaller than this. You have to wet it in water and then just squeeze out the excess with a paper towel. I think it works great for dry skin. Like, you can't even tell that I have dry skin when I use that Beauty Blender. It just it works great because I've always had trouble um, with my foundation sticking to my dry skin and just with that Beauty Blender it gives you moisture because there's water in it and it's just it works great. I love it and it gives me a dewy finish and it's just it's great. I love it. Okay, so that is all the information I have for you and let's just jump right into the demo. So the first thing I'm doing is pumping a little bit of foundation onto the back of my hand because that's where I'm going to work off of. I'm using my Urban Decay Naked Skin Foundation and I'm doing the side of my face using my beauty blender and I did wet it before and I already did moisturize my face and I'm just really like kind of bouncing the sponge off of my face to get the best coverage that I can. Um, I'm just repeating this and then of course blending down my neck to make sure everything is blended nicely and I'm just bouncing it back and forth onto my skin and that's how it looks on that side compared to that side. And now I'm taking that Sigma brush and first I am patting the foundation into my skin um, starting on the areas that I want to have some more coverage and then I'm really buffing it into my skin um, making sure that everything is blended. And then once again I'm just going to keep buffing and blending and blend it down towards my neck. And this is what this side looks with, looks like with the Beauty Blender and this is what this side looks like with the sponge. Yeah. 